review score, okay. Carry on. <laughs> that's the alert verbal pain unresponsive score, that's on patient track as well. So it, it again, it's self-explanatory. Is a patient alert in pain, you just score it and a score comes up. Okay, there's also pain scores, but you know all about pain scores. Um, on the wards, we do use um, uh, the visual, I've used a visual analogue score before. Pain ad as well, usually for dementia patients, where you're going by facial expressions when you assist moving a limb, you know, four out of four, uh, that kind of thing. And also the Bradford pain score, but I haven't actually used that that much. But that's one we're using on the fractured off ward a little bit more, okay? So, maintenance of trends, changes in trends, okay? It's very barn door, patient track. You, you can usually tell if, oh, we'll have a quick look in a sec. You can usually tell if the blood pressure's been going up and down like that, is that patient stable? No, no, it's not, it's not. Unless there's been something significant that's happened to that patient. They fell, they hit the head, they had a cardiac arrest, that'd be a little bit different. Um, but it's, like I say, it's pretty barn door. Um, we sometimes, da -da -da, yeah, you'll need to check the obs before you see the patient. And sometimes during when you see the patient. In orthopaedics, we do um, the day ones take the obs in lying, sitting on the edge of the bed. And then if the patient is able in standing as well, and that's where you get your lying standing BP. And the nursing staff really appreciate that as well. But again, we will be going through this with you in situ. It's very interesting seeing the effects of position change on that patient and then chuck a whole load of comorbidities into it as well. And before you know it, you've probably actually got the mechanism of injury of why they fell and fractured whatever limb. So, I mean, this actually, this experience for you guys might help give you a little bit more insight into when you see patients that come in with um, upper limb fractures and why they fell, because you may see people that have blacked out and that hasn't been picked up in the notes as well. You know, so there's all that, the other side of this process. Right then, okay, let's have a look. Anything else? Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, a positive result in the, in the Royal College of Physicians has got a really nice um, like idiot sheet for doing lying standing BPs, which you can get up on the internet. Um, a positive result in BP drop from lying to sitting is a drop in systolic, the squeeze, the cardiovascular squeeze, day, especially in day ones, um, and um, it's 20 milligrams of mercury drop in BP, okay. And you'd be surprised how many people do actually drop when you get them. And if you think about when you see them actually in MSK sometimes, Again, that's that whole, just thinking about the bigger picture, you know, we probably do, like, oh, just have a minute, you know, but it's not just like, is the GP aware of you, you know, you feel a bit funny when you go from that position, when you've been doing some magic healing treatment, you know, you won't go to prone position, but yeah, but is that, you know, just trying to link it a little bit for you. Um, don't forget, there's also the symptoms as well, you might get, sometimes you get symptoms, but without the um, BP drop as well. So dizziness, lightheadedness, vagueness, and visual disturbances. And remember, we've got a very stoic generation up there as well. I'm absolutely fine, and they're swaying like that. <laughs> like, sit down. Um, so, you know, please do check, you know, so when you're standing, how do you feel? Um, that kind of thing. All right, like I said, a lot of it is barn door common sense. Okay, so is that all right? It's a very brief overview. I'm gonna go through them now with you, taking the obs. Um, show a quick look at patient track as a group and but trying to maintain all that. I could do that maybe together. Yeah, do you want me to show them the patient Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, two groups. Do you want to do that? That'd be really helpful. Thank you. Right, How are we going to video that? Excellent. Yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah. So, right, come here, you. Right, so the dynamo. Okay, friend and slight foe occasionally. There are two types of um, manu uh, ways of taking BP on the wards. There is this machine, the dynamo, and there's another one which has, um, it's a bit more of a square, like a TV thing, and all you do is there's a round button that you press to turn on. It's pretty, we've all been there. I don't know what button's on, but you'll work it out. Like I say, you'll be with someone that will know, so don't worry. But when you're going to take um, the BP, first thing is to turn the BC on. So it should come on a second. It always takes forever. You, I always make the really crass comment of, um, oh, you could be dead by the time you've got it on, you know. <laughs> Depending on the patient, obviously. <laughs> Not all. Um, so, taking your blood pressure. And usually when we're working in pairs, 
we, um, we've got someone kind of sorting out the environment for when you're going to get the patient up for the first time, you know, kind of making sure the bed leads um, are, are the right way so not going to break the neck off. Um, also that the bed breaks are on. Oh my God, because one thing, one George's handy hint is if you are just like one person that just leans against the bed and it swings and you go, oh my Lord. Just always check the brakes of the bed are off, okay? It's, it still happens now. Um, so, the person that's taken the obs, what we're going to do is, I'm just going to pop this on Activil. So, can you do it on that one? So, like that, yeah. Now, there is different cuff sizes because there's peed cuffs, isn't there, Benita? And there is larger cuffs. The majority of this blue adult, standard adult. Okay, so you wrap that around. Obviously, take care of your back position when doing it, or like I've just done. In bed, I would normally try and get someone on a pillow to do the whole relaxed thing. I mean, yeah, you guys are going to know this kind of thing, but there's loads of little hints that we may learn from you. But this is basically how we do it on the ward. So you get the person to relax their arm, do a bit of chit chat, and send them hi, you know, so who's looking after the cat, whatever. Uh, then you press NIVP, okay. And again, you're trying to get the patient to relax. Now, the other golden rule with this is from a cannula and um, any kind of vein access of any fashion, okay, unless you can take a BP from anywhere, well, I mean, here, but the one golden rule is don't, if, unless you've got a cannula in there and the cubicle fossa, then I wouldn't put it, I wouldn't take a BP off the arm. But technically, you can from, if you've got access here and there, that's what I've been told by the safe care nurses. Um, so please be a bit mindful, but I do try and go for the arm with the less needles or access routes in there because these can be quite painful. So that's you got drink. Oh, for <laughs> <laughs> that trophy. So um, actual pressure one hundred five over seventy seven. That's good. A heart rate which is not bad for performance considering you're under scrutiny. Uh, seventy six. And it does give you a mean arterial pressure there as well, but we won't go into that okay, right now. But that's a nice, straightforward, easy way of just taking a, you know, bog standard BP really. Where it can get a bit interesting is with your dementia patients, okay? Sometimes you just have to suck it all off and just go with how they're looking, um, how they're reacting. The safety is paramount, but sometimes faffing around with a load of equipment with someone, obviously if someone's very agitated, you are not going to start trying to take obs on that person. Again, you would find that out from the easing with the nursing staff, okay? That's why it's always, always have a quick chat unless someone's say rushing towards a cardiac arrest or something. So that's the best way to do that. But is that okay? Is everybody happy with that? It's really probably basic stuff, isn't it? Straightforward. I'm, I'm, just let me know if I'm missing anything. So when you were talking about high than the blood pressure, you meant yeah. that my heart rate would be about 105. Right. Yeah, that's slightly, like, there's some different, sometimes there's different things from, it's usually, yeah, you're making sure that the, you don't want the heart, the tachycardia ideally should be above yeah. that, but there's also then the bigger the gap between yeah. that as well, so you don't see it as much as you used to do, these, yeah, the cardiac guys will know more and more about that than me, um, so that's that, if you can do manuals, go for it, because they're far more accurate. These don't recalibrate that well between patients, so you always need to be aware of that. So if I've got someone who is actually literally going off, kind of, I'm, I'm like, oh, get back to bed, I'm gonna take some BPs. Um, and you're, again, you'll be with somebody the whole time, but um, you take a manual, proper manual blood pressure, there's a few things they can do, I can do manuals not as good as you guys but um, it can be done and it's just that knowing that I need to take a manual BP basically. Um, so that's the best one ever because it's just plug them in and just watch what comes up on the screen. Um, you always, I didn't realise this until recently which is terrible, ideally don't put that on the same line as the BP because the circulatory thing, it's quite embarrassing and I learned that about two weeks ago. Yeah, we won't go there. Managed to get through ICU and everything <laughs> for over 10 years. <laughs> Um, so then you get a nice reading, possibly a bit more accurate heart rate reading, 98 over 76. That's really yeah, pretty good, fabulous. Doing fine. Um, yeah, doing fine. Take a few deep breaths for me. For now, and hopefully it'll drop a little bit, the SAT's reading, and it'll go up. Okay, but it's, it's, it's really straightforward stuff. Uh, where it gets a bit funny and a bit frustrating and a bit very frustrating actually is when you have got someone you're trying to you know I really need to justify why I'm going to get this patient up because the best physio for most conditions is get them up and get them moving the best way your patient grows in confidence 
um, you're helping from an airway point of view, from a muscular point of view, you know all this stuff, you know, but if you can get the patient up safely, and if you're trying to juggle, kind of hang on a minute, you know, and you're trying to ninja that, and you're working with someone that hasn't quite remembered the catheter needs picking up, and these are all the Bobby basic stuff we'll do when we're on the ward, but this kind of just gets in the way occasionally, and then when, you know, the patient looks like they're not doing so well as well, he's like, I get this out of the way, but is there a bit, this is not a bad one, but it can be a little bit, and then the battery's gone dead as well, and you have to plug them in, but it always, the plugs are over there. So that's the SATs, okay, so that's the basic stuff with that, what else did I write on here? O2 saturations, um, thermometers will cover when on the ward because they've changed, they used to be the um, ear ones which just literally put a clip in, bung it in the ear, press the, there you go, Bob's your uncle, Charlie's your aunt, um, kind of thing, but now we've got these ones that are um, all the, you can put in the mouth, underneath the tongue, or in the um, axilla as well, okay, with a sleeve, and they're a little bit more technical, but they're, they're more straightforward and more accurate, okay, and obviously in this current times, we will be wanting very accurate obs for various reasons. Um, but we did, uh, we have done that on these fabulous printouts, we've got a, a nice basic way of doing that, that describes it for you. Um, where will we find all this equipment? Where will the dynamat yeah, be? Where will the very temperature point. doodles be? Very Temperature doodles are normally in here. Everything for taking a full set of bulbs are normally with the obs machines. Okay. Um, there are blue mats on each wall yeah. outside some of the bays that will say obs machine, and they're usually there, just a bit like the crash trolleys. Just don't forget to unplug it or take the plug with you, because you probably have to plug it in because they're flat. Um, but it should all be in one area, okay? And you just kind of, as I usually go up to the patient, I go, right, okay, come and see you. Got a pair of socks in one hand, you know, the non-slip socks that we have on the wards. Um, I've got a patient information leaflet in another, you're dragging a reluctant band five with me. Come on, you'll be fine. Um, <laughs> you, know, um, you know, that kind of, come on. <laughs> and, yeah, so, um, yeah, it's that kind of thing. Um, but you just take it all with you, um, and a Zimmer frame at the same time. But again, this is all what you'll learn on the job and not to be worried about, okay? You, like I say, it's just a, it's a bonus and a benefit that you guys are with us, you know? So it's really helpful. George, as a physio, yes. obviously we take our own logs, it's documented on our notes. Um, they'll be re to put your patient um, We're hopefully going to be doing that, yeah, and it's really easy, really easy. I've been doing it for about three years. Yeah, we're sorting that out, we're sorting that out. We thought, we just get you on there and doing, and just looking at obs, just, you know, do it stage one, get yourself happy with it, and then you'll start. But it's just literally, you click on, on there, you click on the screen that has a, a crayon. And it's just, trust me, if I haven't managed it, anyone can. Uh, respiratory rate, observe rise and fall of your patient's chest, but you do need to actually not, we used to just do 15 seconds and times it by whatever. Hmm. You've got to actually watch them. Uh, and that's it. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Cool. Do we want to swap our groups? Yes. And yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you. That's it.